how's it going? It's great for me. So it's it's all it's all good. Hey, congratulations on your short film uh, series here. Great, Thank great, you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really excited about the film festival coming up. So it's really, it's it's crazy, especially because it's happening right now. You know, with all this pandemic going on and everything, and it's just it's incredible to be able to be a part of it still, even though virtually. You know. <laughs> so so how how did it feel when you heard that you your entry got accepted for this film festival? I was incredibly excited because there was another film festival that I submitted to and I didn't get in. And I was so sad. I literally had like a breakdown at some point because we worked really hard on it. And it was a dream of mine to just, you know, get it out there and put it into a film festival. And then, yeah, we just didn't get accepted for the other film festival. And I was I was devastated. I was like, <laughs> literally had like a moment one morning and I was just like, this is all for nothing. You know, it's not going to get seen as much as I wanted it to. And then Dances with Films reached out and they said, hey, congrats. You're officially a part of our, or of our, you know, like virtual film festival this year. They didn't say virtual at first because they didn't know what's going to happen. But I was just, I was like, yes. So it's like when one door closes, there's a window opening somewhere else. So yeah, that was yeah, that's that the possibility is uh, even greater now because it's virtual. Hopefully you'll get uh, even a much wider audience because of that. Exactly. Because everyone is at home and everyone can just tune in and, and watch the series on their computers or, you know, their TV screens without leaving their house. Whereas like before some people abroad would not be able to come and watch it, you know? So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so tell me where the original idea came from for Gritty and Pretty. Uh, well, first of all, I love comedy and I, you know, I usually film a lot of sketches, sketch comedy and things like that. And uh, my friend and I, Kelly, who plays Lauren um, in the series, so her and I, we are, we're friends, we're, we, we did a lot of acting together, we went to Playhouse West together to train for Me Meisner Bass Technique. And um, one day we were just hiking and she's this very bubbly kind of personality. I am too, but I'm more kind of reserved and I'm more like gritty. <laughs> it's a gritty and pretty. And um, so we went hiking one day and uh, we come down from the hike all sweaty and everything. And she's like, pulls out her phone to take a picture of both of us. And she goes like, hashtag gritty and pretty. And I was like, where did you get that? She's like, that's a hashtag. It's like a common thing. And I was like, oh my God. And then I just thought about it. And I was like, this would be a fantastic name for either a short film or a series at the time. I didn't know. And and then I thought, oh my God, this is such a great story because her and I are complete opposites and we're friends, but, but I'm more kind of like closed off from my emotions and I need someone to help me, you know, get them out there and connect with the world. And she's the opposite. She's very bubbly, but she doesn't connect with herself internally too much. I know this is really deep for a comedy, but, but actually it's, and, and that's how, you know, I just went home that day and I started writing and then I thought, Hey, that's a great story. And at the time I was really in interested in boxing. So I thought, hey, what if my character owns a boxing gym and, you know, Lauren's character is an Instagram TV show host, which she is in real life. Uh, well, she was. Um, and then she told me, all, she would tell me all these crazy stories about what she has to do up there, you know, and it's, it's a job. It's not exactly what she wants to do, but it's a job. So, yeah, and then we met and, like, our worlds kind of in the story collide and we help each other out, where it's like I take her away from that crazy job and she helps me get my gym going and, and you know, get it back on its feet type thing. So that's kind of the gist of the story and the inspiration for it. Absolutely. Hey, tell me about the format that you actually use, because uh, because it's a short film format, but it's a series of short films. Yes. So, so it's a series of sketches. Um, why did you choose this format? Is it something because you're familiar with short films before? And why, why not just do like a longer feature film? So yeah, so first, like first, it's not necessarily sketches, it's it's the series. It's a series that has one linear story that continues and it has five episodes. So it's a series, um, which is like a, a one story that continues throughout them. Um, the short format, I wanted to give it a try, first of all, because it's more achievable with not much, 
you know, budget or money because you're able to shoot something that's short and it's very concise and it's, it would be more popular on platforms like, you know, there's a fantastic platform called Twitch that is, you know, it's mostly for gamers, but I feel like there's now more content out there. You can sell to them and present to them. Whereas like they love short form content as well as Netflix is now more interested in content that has like shorter type series or it's a larger, obviously uh, series that are full on TV uh, episodes, TV show episodes. But I thought for this story, especially at the time, I was looking for inspiration to create something while, you know, waiting for work or looking for work as an actor, as a filmmaker. And I thought, hey, short format episodes are much more doable as well as like if the idea gets picked up, I can make a feature film out of it. And there's there's a feature film I'm working on developing right now. But it's much it's much of a it's much more elaborate, you know, as a as a project, you know, if you call it. So I thought, why not try a short series because I can easily, well, hopefully, easily sell it after we're done with it. And um, yeah, it's also accepted at film festivals right now because up until a certain point, that wasn't even considered as you know something you know, like sketch comedy or short web series has not been a part of film festivals as much before, but now they're also considering it as, you know, as, as an entry. So, yeah. So, uh, so during this time you had a love for boxing. Did you have a lot of prep work that you had to do before you made these uh, short films? Yeah. I was actually telling someone the other day that, um, I had to train for four months and I actually got punched in the face one time. <laughs> and that's where my training kind of stopped <laughs> because I thought I still need this face, you know, to be on screen and look good. Um, yeah, it was, it was really hard because, so what I wanted to do is like, I wanted to understand what the, every boxer is going through, how they train every day. And um, the owner of the gym actually where we shot Gritty and Pretty, he told me that I can come every day and I can just train for free if I want to. And he'll help me train. And I was like, Oh wow, you're fantastic. Let's do that. <laughs> so at first it was pad work and then, you know, the, the, the bag work and everything. And I was watching them doing push ups with them and everything. And then he's like, Hey, you're going to the ring. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, you're, here's Peter. He's going to be uh, your, you know, sparring partner. Just like get in there. <laughs> and Peter is like, you know, twice my size and he just walks in and he's like hello with like a really nice voice <laughs> I go can you please take it easy on me he's like oh come on you take it easy on me and I was like no 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 you don't understand I'm not really you know a boxer I'm just training for the film and he's like okay and of course he punched me in the face without you know just because I didn't hold my hands up as I was supposed to so after that I was like okay I'm done <laughs> but I've learned a lot I, it's really hard work and it's really exhausting I would wake up every other day and go there every morning to train with them at seven in the morning um, just so I can get in shape and understand what it feels like it's it's very fortunate that uh, the gym owner uh, let let you also uh, do the production there too it's, so all <laughs> the production was all in the same building Yes, yeah, we, I found it through, there's, um, there's a great resource called Peer Space. You can go there as a filmmaker and look for locations anywhere in your city. And I found his gym and he was, you know, very affordable and a really nice guy and he was really laid back and he, he's just fantastic guy. And I came in and I said, hey, can I come and watch, you know, how you guys train so I can get a better idea? And he, he goes, no, just come train. You're not going to watch, you're going to train. He's like a really tough guy too. He's like, just come in here and get, get, get to work. And I was like, okay. And that saved me a lot of money as well as, you know, I just, I didn't need to hire anyone to train me. I could actually come there and just practice. And he, he, he was, he was really like on me about it. It was like, you gotta, you gotta work. Come on. Don't just slack there. I was like, okay. So yeah, it was, I was really sore and I had a lot of bruises, which I had to kind of cover up a little bit, but it was fun. It was worth it. Well, you, you sure look a lot different on, on your short film series you know, <laughs> with all the makeup and the, and, and the build. So, so that, that was quite a change for you. So that's, that's good. Yes, especially like the, my black eye. <laughs> well, that was fake, obviously. That was makeup. But, but yeah, um, I had to, I, I felt really different. I was also really stressed because there was a lot of work going on. And, you know, it's just like no time to sit down. And now I finally relaxed and I can watch the series from 
my home, you know, presented at the film festival. So, so yeah. Did, uh, did Kelly have to go through any prep work for, for herself too, uh, for, for this series? Emotionally, she had to, um, but not physically, which <laughs> made me, at some point she posted, I remember during the filming, she posted a video, right, like three days before we started filming on her Instagram story, being by the pool, like taking a video and saying, this is my prep for my role and everything, because she, her character does not, is not a boxer, she's very kind of ditzy in a way and everything <laughs> she, she posted and I said I really hate you right now <laughs> because I had to put myself through all this training why did I give myself that role uh, but I had to teach her a little bit about punching because when we started shooting and um, there's a couple of scenes where I actually like you know punch her which I don't but she had to hold her hands up she had to understand the posture so it's just safe. Like, so if you come up, for example, I didn't know this, but if you come up and just start punching a bag, you eventually will break your knuckles. You will really damage your hands. So you have to like punch at a certain angle as well as using your whole body as opposed to just, you know, punching with your, like with a, with your whole hand as opposed to with like just the knuckles. Otherwise you'll break your arm. And so I said, I told her I had to teach her certain things and be like, you have to be a little bit aware of how to you know, position your body not to hurt it necessarily. So, yeah. Wow. You, you surely <laughs> do know <laughs> you're boxing. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> yeah. So, so how, what's it like uh, directing yourself, um, you know, for, for, for these uh, types of projects? Because, uh, you know, as in, as an indie director yourself, you, you have to do pretty much everything. Yes, I, I actually told someone else recently in an interview that I probably won't do that again. <laughs> um, the reason for that is I don't think, I absolutely admire filmmakers who can do both. I'm actually watching a master class right now uh, by Judy Foster talking about filmmaking. And she is a, she's a director, actress, you know, mostly an actress, but now a film director. And um, she is able to combine both, but I feel like she has a bigger crew and she has a crew that is able to do most of the work. Whereas when you're an indie filmmaker and you're not working with a studio, you have to kind of, you know, balance a lot on your shoulders because it, it's just a lot of work. And um, it was really tough. I'll be honest with you. It was not, I did not particularly enjoy that. Um, I enjoyed directing when I wasn't in the scene, in the certain scenes, I had a lot of fun directing and acting for sure. Cause I love acting, but you know, certain parts of it, like there's um, a very emotional moment coming up uh, in episode five, which we haven't released yet, but it's there. And it was so stressful in the day because I had to stay in my emotional state as well as communicate with the crew and uh, my director of photography, Nicholas Acosta, who was a fantastic filmmaker, he, I had to kind of ask him to help me on the day because I couldn't stay in an emotional state as well as not be mean to the crew <laughs> because I had to break down in the, in the scene. So I found it very challenging. And I think in the future, unless I have a really large crew and, and you know, every, like a lot of time to prepare and plenty of money to be able to spare to, you know, make the process easier, I probably wouldn't do that again, especially because you need other people to kind of see you from the outside. You know what I mean? You, you have to, you, you can miss a lot of important elements if you're if you're directing yourself and you don't have the outside perspective of it you know but my I, but I was really lucky because like I said my crew was incredible and they were at work really hard and they helped with suggestions and ideas and everything so it was teamwork as opposed to just me directing myself you know <laughs> it's a, it sounds like you're the biggest critic of yourself <laughs> oh yeah I'm very I'm very it's yeah <laughs> I still watch this and I'm like, I don't even know. Like I, now I see it. I, I'm very proud of the work we've done, but I, I feel like I could have avoided a lot of trouble if I had someone maybe on board with me directing together um, or not being in it at all. And just, you know, being the director uh, so I could focus more on it. But I'm, I'm not like Woody Allen or, you know, who just can, you know, produce millions of films a year and just be in it at the same time as write them and everything. Um, I feel like it's, it's just, it's a lot of work and I'm such a control freak that I want everything to be perfect. Yeah. 
what 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 are you hoping to aspire to become you know down down the road i think a little bit of both i i really love i love the decision making process of filmmaking um and i love in acting that the humanity that comes through you as an actor as a as a, as a creator and ability to connect with the world so I, I, I genuinely love both, um, but filmmaking is probably more what I aspire to simply because it's much more complicated as well as much more challenging. Acting is really challenging, but um, filmmaking requires you to create with a lot of material, not just with emotions, but also with color and cameras and uh, story and, and, and it's just, I find that I, I like, I love challenges. I really do. Um, so I think, I think I would want to direct more, if not produce, but, but filmmaking is something that always feels, makes me feel creative and, and connected and also telling stories that matter. And, and, you know, my, my friend is making a film right now um, called Black Excellence. Uh, you know, it's a portrayal of everything that's going on right now. And um, I'm editing it for him. And I find that incredibly rewarding because it's, it's 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 like shaping something out of material out of gemstones you know all these mm -hmm. people people work together and yeah so i think i think directing is something i aspire to in the future more than, than acting but i love acting and yeah it's my passion so we'll see what happens <laughs> well you know we, we we never know which uh which path that uh you know life actually takes you but i i, I do know is that uh, one of the things that uh a lot of people love you then was uh was it was it orange is the new black oh right? yeah <laughs> <laughs> you played young young red hey talk talk about that experience i mean you, you you probably could guess that that was a big show at the time oh yeah i was absolutely flabbergasted when i booked that role because i <laughs> i didn't expect it i was first of all i didn't have any big credits behind my back i didn't i was nobody and at all it's just i didn't do anything big at the time except for training for you know at the theater and um yeah somebody just it, what, the way it came about i met someone at a party the, this girl turned out to know some people i'm so sorry <laughs> it's a lot outside um she just knew certain casting directors she knew when the roles would come out and she reached out to me out of blue one morning and she goes hey they're casting young red and oranges in the black and i was watching the show religiously so i was like wow that's never gonna happen well but great um and she told me you know send your send your stuff and i was like well i don't have much stuff but i'll send what i have and um yeah, so the, my manager initially pitched me for the other role in the in the episode of a friend of Red, also a Russian girl, and then and then he called me back and he goes like, "I pitched you for that, but you should go for Young Red because you have red hair." I was like, "Okay, we'll see." So so yeah, I submitted my materials. They reached out. They asked for a tape, and I left the city, so I wasn't even able to do that. So I recorded it at the hotel room, and um, the tape the the material they sent was like ten pages of dialogue and luckily it's my my native language so it was very easy for me and I understood it really well because the character is so sarcastic and like you know just I I really understood who she was so I was like okay we'll do it because it's fun I just I was like a chance to audition for Orange New Black and then three days pass and I wake up to this email and they're like oh congratulations you booked the part uh you're filming next week in New York and I was like what I could not believe it I, I could not I was completely when I came there, there were moments where I would work on set and we would film the scenes and everything and I would be in the moment and they would bring in the slate and it said, orange is new black. And I would just like for a moment, just glance at it and be like, oh my God, orange is new black. And then I'd just like, focus, focus, focus. Okay, work. <laughs> you know? um, it was, it was amazing. They, they really, they had a lot of fun with the, the, this specific episode because it was set in Soviet Russia. So they had to build the set and um, there was a lot of costumes, you know, period costume. And they had so much fun because they're like, we've been filming in the, in this prison for like a couple of years. And we get, when we get a chance to go outside and film somewhere else, they even shipped a booth, a phone booth that I used in the, like I, I, I stand there pretending like I'm talking on the phone. They shipped it from Ukraine. They actually chipped the booth. Yeah, it's like a Soviet-looking phone booth. And I was like, wow, the amount of detail they've put into all of that was amazing. So, yeah. that, that, that is actually amazing. Too, too, too bad they didn't film it over there. <laughs> they right? 
I said too yeah. bad they didn't film it over in Russia um, instead of a you know filmed it in New York, but. But it still looked amazing. They found like a factory that looked like an actual Soviet factory. They built a whole apartment um, from scratch. They brought all the materials from Russia. So you would have Russian furniture and it looked Russian to me. And I am Russian. I was, I, I was amazed at the amount of work they've put into it. And I think you're right. Maybe it was, I mean, it would be much more complicated to fly to Russia to film, I, I think because they already have a set and everything ready to just be built from scratch and do whatever they want. But I was, yeah, I was amazed. They, 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 they did a fantastic job. I thought even my friends in Russia say like, wow, that looks right. It looks like Russia at the time, you know, since yeah. now you got a taste of like a big budget thing. Do you, do, do you have that desire, that fire to go, go back to, you know, that the, the big oh. stuff again? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like you've tasted it once and it will never go away. All <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird because I'm glad I got that, but at the same time it kind of spoiled me a little bit because that's all I want now. And creating the series that, you know, Gritty and Pretty series that we did not have even half of that budget. So it was kind of like, Oh, back to hard work and <laughs> just, you know, eating your salad from a, from a plastic container. Um, whereas like on set, my, the other co-stars I was working with, they were fantastic. We, we, they cast everyone so well. We were, we just connected. We were really good, you know, friends throughout this. And we were sitting at some point in the chair and they brought us like warm jackets cause it was freezing outside. And, and they were like, do you want some coffee or something? And I'm like, no, no, we're good. So they, they went away and I turned to my co-star, uh, and he goes, I could get used to this. <laughs> It's like it's all gonna be over in a week but um but yeah right now we're just enjoying this as much as we can so, yeah excellent excellent and and you and you are native russian so so you were born in russia yeah st petersburg oh wow because i was gonna say your english is perfect yeah thank you i've been working on it oh you've been working on it so so when did you immigrate here to the united states and how how is how is that life adjustment I feel like now it's been five years uh, since I came to LA, but I came here be prior to that and I've lived in Canada for a bit and I studied in, in England. I've been all over the place. So I studied English since I was very young. I went to an English school and um, English speaking kind of, you know, it was a, the focus was English. So, but, but, but here is where I kind of, cause when I lived in Britain, my, my accent was a little more British um, kind of switched. It was, it was, I've always wanted to live here. I've always wanted to live in LA and America because I thought it just kind of my type of energy. Um, it was, at first it was really hard and it still is because speaking, if we're talking professionally, it was really hard because now that role that I have, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's in Russian. So I have to prove myself to be able to work also in American roles or audition for American characters or something like that. But I feel like it's, it's like taking the job away from American actors. Uh, but yeah, I feel, I, I love it here. I know a lot of my friends struggle to adjust to living in, in LA and in America, but I love it. I love it. It's, it's such a mix of culture. Whereas like London is different. When I used to live in London, London is much more closed off i feel like even though there's so many different nationalities living there it's very kind of disconnected whereas here everyone is together and everyone is socializing and creating together so i really love that about la wow i'm a, i'm actually impressed so so that basically means not only you could do an american accent you could do a russian accent and you could do yes. a British accent and then maybe a canadian accent at the same time <laughs> Well, not so much British. It's been a while. I would have to work on it, but I probably could if I worked really hard. But yeah, if you want me to speak with a Russian accent, I completely can. Because <laughs> that's really close to uh, French more so. I think French is something that I can speak a little better um, than British English. Uh, but yeah. Well, you're, you're a woman of many talents. Well, let, let, let me... Let me wrap it up with uh, one one more thing with you because it, it's it's quite a strange question, but we always ask it because of the the times we're actually going through. But how are you staying creative towards your next project during times like that we're going through today? Uh, honestly, it's a great question because I feel almost bad saying this, but I love the pandemic. 
<laughs> I don't love what it's doing to the world, but I love it because I have much more time to focus on creative projects. And we've, my boyfriend and I, my boyfriend is a filmmaker too. Um, we've been able to create so many short films more than we've ever been able to before because we have time, we have equipment, we have imagination to just sit down and use this time productively. We made a short film that won the Film Riot One Minute Film Challenge and we got like so much, we won so much gear without again leaving our home and that was really inspiring and um, yeah we found creative ways of just using like learning new tools. I've started from him learning uh, visual effects because visual effects allow you to create something without going outside. You can create something inside your apartment. Like I made like a whole galaxy um, out of like a visual effect tutorial. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, the galaxy. Um, but I, I know a lot of people struggle because it is a really tough time, but I find it very creative because it's almost like, like in my favorite, Christopher, uh, I think it's Christopher Robin, Robin the, the film about Winnie the Pooh, when he says, sometimes from doing, like the best of things happen from doing nothing, or some, doing nothing leads to the very best of something. And I feel like that's, that's what's been happening throughout this pandemic for me, for, for, for me. Uh, so yeah, we've been filming a lot, doing photo shoots when we can at home as well with things we have it kind of limits you and forces you to use your imagination just create something create a world out of whatever you have at home uh so yeah i've been trying to film as much as possible and write too writing has been really good well you know what i love that because you're finding a silver lining in everything and and after all you do have a short film series at dances with films and that's that's pretty big itself so congratulations thank you thank you so much thank you well, well, I appreciate uh, you uh, speaking with me, and hopefully we get to do this again. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. That was really fun. Have a wonderful day. Hey, you too. Thank Bye now. Bye.